Welcome to The Looking Glass. Today we're going to learn about how our higher self, God, Spirit, Divine Source, speaks to us through symbolism. And these symbolisms help us to navigate our lives so that we are not lost and we do not fall into any tricks or traps. So let's talk about this and go in depth with Casey's piece. And although this is an individual message for Casey, this is also a collective message that we can all learn about how our deceased loved ones and how spirit teaches us through symbolism. So in Casey's piece, we have a daffodil, a strawberry, the letter E, a crown, the all-seeing eye, a bumblebee, a ballerina dancer, many sun symbols, the candlestick, the rainbow, the holy dove, a holy grail, a bell, an Easter egg, the infinity symbol, and the triangle going up. There's also symbols of divination and the heart. There is a book on top of a person's head around three o'clock. All of these symbols speak not only one message per symbol, but each symbol can actually contain a myriad of messages, mentally, physically, spiritually. It can speak of the past, present, and future. So a book could reflect life. It could reflect learning. It could reflect parallel realities, shifting from page to page, life after life. And it can reflect change. A book can also reflect death and life. So let's get started. And we're going to get started by looking at the strawberry that looks like a heart on the heart of Casey's mother who has passed. And we would think, oh, what a silly strawberry. Oh, of course it just means love and the color red and green and Christmas and delightful tastes in our mouths. But it actually contains so much more. And so when when you guys receive a reading from me and you see a holy dove above your head, it's not just a holy dove. It is the symbol of health, mental and spiritual health and your kundalini and being the temple of God or that God must be realized within you. So I thought it was kind of funny how I found this article that has 11 spiritual signs and meanings of the strawberry. Never treat the strawberry with disdain or dishonor because the strawberry is more significant than we ever imagined. And we have to start looking at strawberry shortcake a little differently as well. So the the strawberry reflects enjoying good things in life, positive experiences. If you've been having a bad time, the strawberry is there to tell you that good things are about to happen. It creates hope in your heart because of how sweet it is. It reminds you that the bad times will not last forever. It's a promise that something good is going to happen. The red color is known as the zeal of God. The red color is associated with fire, the spiritual fire that is igniting within you. If you doubt that there is a God, the strawberry is the promise of God awakening within you. Strawberries are a sign that God cannot lie. So when you see a strawberry, this is a very, very good sign. It is a promise and a hope and a shift and an ignition and a recognition of God within you. The fruit of the Spirit is connected to the strawberry. So the strawberry is really a message from God himself, herself. And you know that I talk about God being within you that ignites within your brain. So we, we've, you know that I'm not talking about God outside of yourself as a male figure. The fruit of the Spirit can be defined as the Holy Spirit. So this bird above your head is also a connection to the strawberry. It is about becoming productive in our walk with God. This sounds Christian, but stay with me. We're going to talk about it from a spiritual perspective, not God outside of ourselves. So this article says that it is expected to increase your devotion and service to God. Of course, I think that these people who wrote this article believe that God is outside of themselves. It actually awakens within your heart and it's it's around you, it's inside you, it begins within you and then it comes outside of you and um, and it is not male and it is not this energy that people perceive as outside of themselves. This is about a 
a mirror phase for you. Seeing yourself as not just yourself. Seeing yourself as being guided divinely by a higher self. So the mindset of the strawberry is be careful what you think and how you feel because your outer reality will basically reflect it back to you like a mirror. So if you hate people, you're going to meet hateful people. If you love people, you're going to meet loving people. And so forgiveness is being asked when you see the strawberry. Maintaining a healthy mindset will help you to shift into 5D reality a little quicker because uh, you will want to be safe and not a spiritual virus to those who are cleaning themselves at this time. The strawberry reflects that something supernatural is attached to its appearance and wants to talk to you. It is asking you to unblock your ear so that you can hear the voice of spirit and the spirit will lead you to some kick-ass amazing places. Becoming sensitive to the voice of God or the sun or electromagnetic energy or frequency is simply by going through what I call the eye of the needle and that is um, becoming nothing. Just feel nothing, believe nothing, and you'll start shifting. Um, you're going to find love soon. Don't give up just yet. This is telling you do not give up as painful as experiences are. There's good things coming your way. Hold on. Reminds me of a song. Don't you ever feel sad. Lean on me when times are bad. When the day falls and you're down. And you're in a river and about to drown, hold on. Goodness is coming. You know, good things of life belong to you. You are a creative being and you can create as many good things as you desire every single day. When I started my business, I, w I started making things out of rocks and stones. And I even made business cards out of rocks and I would hand them out. So enjoying the fruits of your labor is part of this strawberry do things with your hands and know that you are a healer you need to drink honey at this time to increase your psychic and or oracle abilities because of that bumblebee on your chest so if you find yourself eating a strawberry under the har harvest moon it means that your harvest is about to come true and yes yes your mother above her head looks like a moon and the strawberry is under the moon Keep your heart positive. This means avoiding all energies that reflect death. You hear something that talks about negativity and subjects that polarize us and keep us fighting. Don't listen to it. Listen to comedy. Laugh at yourself. Laugh at others. Completely brainwash yourself. Swim in glitter. Just do whatever you have to do to shift yourself away from a negative world and a negative mindset. Because everything in your life is working for your good. You will not be in a disadvantaged position. And the past is over. It's time to move on in your life. Know that you are not alone. Know that the negative was beneficial and we can turn pain into power. So strawberries reflect passion. And keep, it keeps us on the move. So when spirit led me to do what I do... It keeps me moving. Otherwise, I get really bored. And I can absolutely go to the mindset of fear. And when I do that, then it's because I'm not busy. So being busy with your passion, being busy with your gift, being busy with the communication of your higher self, leading you to do some fantastic things. Like go out and lend a helping hand, help others. Or go out in the woods and find a bunch of sticks and super glue some beautiful jewels on them and make some wands. You know, do something fantastic and give the world some magic and love. And this distraction will shift your reality like a time shift. And also, well, the strawberry reflects that someone cares for you. Your mother, God, uh, divine source, spirit, the sun, um, the white dove, the white bird. all of the, And that your relationships in your life are about to blossom. This is the number 11. So fantastic, right? Look out for the strawberry. If you begin to see strawberries more or continue to see strawberries, this is your omen and your sign that spirit is talking to you. Let's talk about the dancing ballerina that is dancing between two poles. This is also quite significant. The dancing ballerina reflects transcendence. 
It is about realizing that you are the universe, that you have the ability to shift the world. Um, as above, so below, well, well. As below, so above. You can shift the world and your reality. So the ballerina is about ascension symptoms, ascending to 5D. And this ascension caused many, causes many of us worry, confusion, and even dread. Many of us feel dead. Many of us feel like crying, but we can't cry or comfortably numb. But don't be afraid because this is a vibrational shift. And we do go through this eye of the needle. It is the nothing, like on the never ending story. And the nothing is we feel nothing. I believe nothing. I don't even care whether I care or not. <laughs> and going through this nothing is terrible and beautiful. So just know that you're not alone with it. We are going through this learning. So in this nothing place with the book on your head, you are going to be learning from the spirit. And spirit's going to show you a mirror. You're going to see a little girl in the mirror. And this little girl is going to grow into a woman, a queen, a man, a spirit. And you're going to realize that you are not individual. You are a collective consciousness moving in sync with others in divine order. All of you moving in sync like the ballerinas moving together. You're not going to be alone anymore. You will be part of a collective consciousness and your mind and your beliefs are going to shift and all of us are shifting. It's crazy how quickly we're shifting. So as the earth is ascending and our minds are ascending, our bodies are also ascending. It's like our DNA is shifting. And what does this DNA shift mean? It means that the God gene that is within us is igniting through the ignition of the sun. The sun flips every 11 years. So you standing between two poles is that you've gone through a polar shift. And this is the polar shift where the sun flips every 11 years. And now... The moon, the mind, is no longer in control. The heart, the sun, is now in control. And the sun and the heart is focused on formlessness and spirit, collective consciousness, astral travel, and doing amazing things. So you have a crown, and your mom has the crown above her head, and the crown is the Corona Borealis. And this Glenda crown holds the blazing star that is connected to the Corona Borealis. The blazing star is connected to King Solomon and the two poles. And I'll talk to you about that in a second. The dog that Dorothy holds is following a divine order of God, not following the mind or the matrix or logic. We are following a natural order, a flow like a river. And the Bible talks about the crown in many ways. Do not fear what you are about to suffer. The devil will hold you in a prison. Be faithful unto death and I will give you the crown of life. So it's the Wizard of Oz. <laughs> um, Dorothy walked the yellow brick road to shift from lead to gold and to follow Pisces to the golden age of Aquarius. And the Corona Borealis, Corona means crown. So your crown is being fed. And as it is fed, you will begin to be ignited by the blazing star that seems as if it's outside of yourself, but it's actually inside of you as well. So the seven sisters of the Corona Borealis is the seven colors to the rainbow and your seven chakras. The Corona Borealis looks like a great orb wall that is a pink bubble surrounded by emerald color. It looks like an eye and this eye is right next to you. And this pink bubble is why Glenda came down in a pink bubble she represents the Corona Borealis. This pink bubble is within your brain. It is the pineal gland that ignites like an antenna and begins to hear the voice of God. And you're like, what? And God's like, uh-huh. And you're like, oh my God, I didn't know you were even there. You were like so dead for so long. I'm so mad at you. And God's like, well, you just had to go through a rebirth. And now you're awake. Now you're alive. Now you can hear it. Now you can follow it. The daffodil. The daffodil is about joy, and it's so funny that next to the daffodil and your mom is the word joy and vitality. This symbol of the daffodil helps you to overcome negativity. They are they bloom in the springtime. So, you know, it reminds me of the song, The Rose. In, in the spring becomes the rose. Well, in the spring, instead of the rose, it's the daffodil. And daffodil sounds like laffodil. Ha ha ha, you're going to laffodil. So it's new beginnings and rebirth, forgiveness, inspiration, renewal, 
and uh, memory, awareness, inner reflection, and creative spirit. You know, in places that's really cold, when you see the daffodil for the first time, many people decide not to commit suicide because there's hope, and that's the symbol of the daffodil. Daffodils are short-lived, but they bring such bright sun energy. It's incredible. The infinity symbol above your dad's head with the symbol of the the triangle going up is a symbol of maintaining consciousness and the promise of eternal life and the promise of ascension and the marriage of flesh and spirit, water and fire. So although reptilian energy aggravates you, it is it serves to push us up to our purpose, which is to maintain memory, maintain consciousness, and have eternal life. So whenever you want to connect with truth, you can look at symbolism, look at the daffodil, look at the strawberry, eat a strawberry, go buy some daffodils, um, look at this eye, um, look at all the symbols in your piece. You're meant to be a diviner. You're meant to divine the voice of God, and that's why you're going through such a shift. You've gone above the wall. It's a wonderful symbol to have as well, but you're going through the ascension, and this ascension is connected to the ballerina twirling and twirling until she finally shifts to a reality where she's not dancing alone. She's dancing with others who are like-minded and also know how to dance like the perfect ballerina. At six o'clock, there's the number 33. So Jesus died at 33. You have 33 vertebrae in your spine. And there is a symbol of your mother talking about when we die, we, our consciousness bounces to a parallel body, like Dorothy going to Kansas. She just shifted. So the two pillars of Solomon are called Boaz and Joaquin, and they are symbolic of truth. They are not literal things to worship. It's, it's a symbol within your mind that opens things within your heart and mind. So the pillars of Solomon were really awakening Atlantis within us. So when you are between these two poles, this is about you leaving the material world and reaching a higher realm of enlightenment, which is taking you back to Atlantis. And uh, Atlantis must be a pretty awesome place. So here you see the all-seeing eye, which is in your piece. Here you see the two pillars, which is in your piece. And all of these are about death at 6 o'clock. And then look where you are. Look at this piece and then look where you are. It's a very positive symbol that you've gone above the wall. You're going into the eye of God, which is under the eye is, or inside the eye is being under grace, not under narcissistic controls. Being between the two pillars is also about Gemini, your twin flame, and about the ascension of the Holy Spirit coming out of a trap and finally coming and bringing life and resurrection to those of us who feel dead you know the bell um, by your mother and the rainbow is about an awakening and it is about you becoming a temple and watching your holy temple which is your body treating it as a temple as well um, there's a hummingbird this is about time travel there's the letter t a lot temple time travel and this is about you also um, becoming a church so um Whatever you do, you're going to end up teaching. Whatever you, whatever spirit teaches you, you're going to end up teaching. And this teaching is going to be like a church, just like I do. I don't have a building, but I have a platform on TikTok and YouTube, and I have become a church. But I hate churches, <laughs> and I hate cults. So I just teach that you have the power within you. So don't trust me. Don't worship me. Don't think that I'm the end-all, be-all. Know that I just lead you to your truth and the God within you as you see it. The babies in your pieces speak that it doesn't matter whether you had an abortion or a miscarriage or if it was sudden um, infant death syndrome in your family, that babies um, don't just disappear. They're still here and they're actually here talking to you. And they're talking about um, one of them has a symbol of the hourglass three hourglasses on their head and this reflects three spirits that we were one at one time we had three souls in one male female and the holy spirit the trinity father son holy spirit and we are going back to that so the letter v of your mother is also 
the symbol of the crown, the Corona Borealis, and she is actually protecting your crown and encouraging you to step into that crown. And this is about you going through a marriage of flesh and spirit and spinning faster and faster like frequency so that you can make it to the new world. Thank you, Spirit, for teaching us what Casey needs to hear at this time. The Easter egg at your chest reflects that we were cut from ourselves. So our spirit was cut once or twice. And according to the Easter egg on your piece with the letter E, you were cut with the line through it. Your soul was cut. My soul was cut. We were all cut. Male, female. Adam was cut into Eve. The sun was cut from the moon. But according to your piece, we were cut three times. Like Osiris' body was cut 14 times or his spirit. And we were cut three times. And we're coming back to that unity and that trinity in this lifetime. Woohoo! The goose above your head is simply a symbol of your mother with a mother goose. And the letter E meaning I. And the I uh, that is over your mother's head is also significant. So your mother sent you this song. Thank you, Casey, for what you have to teach us. Thank you for listening. If you want a reading, go to forestfairy.com. Precious love, I give to you. Blue is 